Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Zodiac Bandit, and today I'm going to be continuing my ranking various characters list for each person. Uh, I'm going for the second video on Matt because Matt had his villains last week, and this week we're going to be putting out his NPCs. Small caveat I am not including Essek or Allura in this because they would be in this video if I did, but they are also what I would consider to be DMPCs, which are the DM's player characters because they feel like playing and adding their character in. That is what a DMPC is, and Essek is the literal definition of it. He is the ninth member of the Mighty Nine, and Allura was basically, he admitted, to his own self-insert throughout the game of Campaign 1. So, yeah, thought I'd exclude those two, which would like free up some space for other uh, characters for me to talk about today, and that's what I did. So, let's get right into the list. And at number four, I have Victor. I love Victor. This character is fucking hilarious. He provided Percy with his black powder. And visually, every time we saw him, he was losing more and more appendages off his body. And I thought that was hilarious. He had physical character progression and would learn from his mistakes. And his house would also be affected by this with a hole in the roof after one of the meetings. This character was just all around funny. Um, it was one of the few times where after an NPC was revealed in Campaign 1, where the entire cast lost their shit, and to a point where after each time they were going to meet him, they just began to anticipate every second of, of time spent with him. And each interaction with, with a new character, because sometimes the entire Vox Machina crew wasn't always there when they met Victor, so with different people, as they got introduced to him, we would get different and more funny interactions with him. And he was just a hilarious character who I really enjoyed. And him being such a comedic character, off against Percy's like very straight and serious character, made him all that much better because of how wacky he is. And honestly, to me, it felt like if Percy went down a certain path, he could end up just like Victor. So, really enjoyed this character. Always made me laugh. Was extremely fun to see every time he showed up in Campaign 1. And unfortunately, he's not with us anymore, so he's not there in Campaign 2 or 3. But apparently he's got relatives, so hopefully we can meet whoever he's related to. I really want to know if they're just as weird as he is or not. Anyway, love Victor. He is probably one of Matt's best joke characters, and I love seeing him every time. He is one of the handful of characters where whenever Matt uh, makes a new funny character, I go back and watch one of his older Victor videos because those kill me. They put pain in my side every time because... That character is so goddamn funny. And at number three, I have Sean Gilmore. What's not to like about Sean Gilmore? He is one of the most energetic, charismatic characters in all of Campaign 1 that the party came across. He is a magic salesman and a sorcerer in his own right, a class of which I would still like to see one of the players play. He's a rune child. And I just really enjoyed this character. First of all, he gave Vax a lot of emotional... Uh, character development as time went on it, because with him, with Vax it was between picking Sean and picking Keyleth at a certain point in the story and when Vax went with Keyleth there was a bit of a divide between Sean and him and maybe even some of the other members of Vox Machina for a little while but they had to push beyond because it was kind of sad for old Sean Gilmore it was, it was a rough time for him to finally have found someone that he really cared for only to be shot down and to still overcome it and be friends and a loyal family member to them. And I really enjoyed this character. He performed lots of really fun moments, fun actions. When the Chroma Conclave attacked, he was right there in the fight and he got injured from it. This character was all over the place in Campaign 1. Really fun. It was clearly one of Matt's favorite characters as he got to come up and do a lot of things throughout the first campaign. I am shocked we haven't seen him in campaign 3 yet. Because he is from Marquette. So the fact that he hasn't shown up at all. Shows quite a lot of restraint in my opinion from Matt. Because I would have thrown him in already. He would have a franchise in Jushar. A franchise in all the other places they've been so far. So I'm shocked he hasn't shown up quite yet. I think he will. And I'm excited to see him. Because I know he's going to. But that aside. He's just a fun character. Uh, not quite as funny as Victor was, but still very energetic and very exciting to see him and his store every single time. Because when you know they go to him, they're going to pick up something interesting 
and he's going to be interesting himself. Just a fun character overall. At number two, we have the greatest Canadian to ever live, Pumat Sol. I love his character. He is hilarious. He's fun. And he is a ride or die. When the Mighty Nine had to go fight Oban and the Laughing Hand and Yasha, Pumat Sol came right with him. He knew that he had to help them because they were his friends. And he's awesome. I love his whole Simulacrum thing. Pumat Prime stands out above the rest because he wears goggles. I love this character. He's a great salesman. And honestly, he wasn't the same type of salesman that um, Sean Gilmore was. He had a lot less inventory and he was a lot more creative in his things that he handed them. They weren't as quite useful, just more fun and interesting things that he handed the party. One of my favorite things he ever gave Ford was the cape that would make him look heroic. That to me was always fun. And his interactions with Lucas, Veth's son, was awesome. I really enjoyed that when a kid showed up, he turned into a kind of parent-like figure himself. He isn't quite the emotional connection that we had with Sean Gilmore, but more so just a very good person to be around. And he was fun every time he showed up. It was another one of those characters that whenever they would go near him, the players and the viewers, myself included, would get extremely excited because they get to see an excellent performance from Matt with this character. Liam couldn't contain himself almost every time they saw him, and it was just a fun time whenever Pumat was around. And like I said, ride or die, that guy went and fought with them in an incredibly important battle as that portion of the campaign was starting to wrap up and they needed a little bit of help. And here comes Pumat's soul to show off how badass he was. And he was awesome. He was awesome in that fight. And I will always remember the moment where he threw his bag on and was like, all right, we going? And the, the Mighty Nine were shocked that he just immediately was like, yeah, I'm coming to help. What else am I going to do? And I, I really love the character. He was fun, cool. He wasn't energetic or charismatic, but the way he carried himself made him seem that way. And he was really fun, really cool. I love that there was, you know, the clones of him running around all the time. And I love how he always felt like he had the need to apologize because he didn't have all of the magical items that the party required, much like a Canadian would. Eh? And at number one, we have Artagon. Artagon is awesome. First of all, I feel kind of cheap putting him here because he had so much more screen time than virtually any other NPC across both campaigns. And this guy literally jumped from campaign one to campaign two and attached himself to one of the most charismatic and fun characters in Jester. And it was impossible to really go an episode without him coming up in some shape, some way, shape, or form. And again, really fun. I love his whole stick of being chaotic and being mildly manipulative. The only person he truly couldn't completely manipulate being Jester because she kind of manipulated him sometimes. It's kind of funny. I love her, uh, him and Jester bouncing off each other. I love the eventual sprinkle reveal. I love everything that happened with Artagon, especially when we got an entire arc based around him trying to escape all of his followers with the exception of Jester, and he was just an awesome character. I love that at moments he can, like, conveyed the most confidence ever, and then before they went to Rumble Cusp would show off that he was sick of all the crap that he had to deal with. He was so against helping people, and he only really wanted to help Jester because she was the most fun out of them all. And when it came time to push, he was like, I don't want to go down, well, you know, without a fight, you know, that kind of crap. And then once he saw, like, Jester was willing to go with him to wherever the Moonweaver was taking him, he almost had a moment of, like, no, like, this is my problem, not yours. And because of Jester's actions, he was saved from that. So lucky him to have such a loyal person with him. And that changed his character. He became more, much more of a you know, loyal person to Jester. Because beforehand, he wasn't. And again, character growth is important, even for your NPCs. So it was fun to see this character going from someone who was selfish to the point of being, you know, cocky to the point of being really selfish and really arrogant among themselves, to someone who really cared about what his most loyal follower was doing. And he cared to make sure she didn't get hurt or anything like that. And I really enjoyed the character growth, especially going from Artagon in Campaign 1 to Campaign 2. Because in campaign one, he was a sick fuck who liked pulling jokes on the cast and like pulling, you know, bullshit. And he's like, oh, the only way 
I will help you guys out is if I get to kill one of you with my bare hands. And that is not the same person that we saw at the end of Campaign 2 to where he would probably never consider killing them. You know, our tag in Campaign 1 would have totally tried to kill the Vo Vox Machina group, but he would have never truly thought about finishing off Might and Nine. And that is a good show of his character development. And, you know, gotta love the red hair. Gotta love the red hair. Because he's a ginger fuck. Does he have a soul? Who knows? I think he does. I think he showed his soul by the end. And there you have it. My top four Matt Mercer NPCs. Uh, excluding the two I mentioned at the beginning. Because they are not NPCs. They are DMPCs. So yeah. I will be eventually talking about his DMPCs later down the line. So yeah. That will be cool. Once we meet the Campaign 3 DMPC. We might have already met them. You never know. But until then. I am kind of done with these ranking videos. I have gone over every player's player characters, and I have now gone over both the villains and the good guys for Matthew Mercer. So I think it's time to put a nice little bow on this and call this one good for now. So I'll see you guys Friday with the episode 28 review. I believe it's 28. It might be 29. Anyway, see you guys then. Peace.